12 volt lithium ion battery, two pull flat extension cables, waterproof cable glands, female disconnects, waterproof butt splicers, wire cutters, heat shrink tubing, a waterproof box, and a power drill. Get out your extension cables and the wire cutters. I'm going to measure about one quarter length and I'm going to cut this, these wires. I'm going to have the longer end running from the battery to outside the battery box. Get out your female disconnect. We are going to cut these wires off. We're going to cut out the tubing on the outside with the wire cutters. Expose that copper wire. Uh, twist it a little bit just so your ends go into the disconnect easier. Make sure it's all the way on there. Then we're going to crimp down the ends of this with anything you got. Um, this was the this I thought was more effective than the wire cutter using these pliers. And then we got to do the same thing with the other side. Expose that copper wire, twist it, make it nice and tight so it fits in that tight hole, crimp it down. Use those muscles, yeah! Okay, we got both those ready. I put some electrical tape around just to seal it up and so that when I pull it off the battery over and over, it's not going to pull off um, those wires. Those disconnects aren't going to pull off the wires. Simply just slide them right on. They should go on pretty nicely. So as you can see, uh, the longer piece I put on the battery so it can come out of the box. And now I'm going to drill a hole through this box. I'm using the 5 8 size right here. Got that hole. It's a little jagged on the edges so I, I'm going to use a razor blade to trim the outside so it's flush. We're going to do that on both sides. Next, we get our cable glands. It's a tight fit, but it should go through. This is the size 9 cable gland. So I put that on already on the box and tighten it on, and then I put the other end over so that it, it screws on, and I'll show you. So both those go in. This is a little rubber piece that waterproofs it, so I had to cut it, unfortunately, but I had to cut it to get it on those wires and push it in, but it worked fine. Then we screw the cap on. Make sure it's nice and tight, because I ain't taking this off. I'm planning on leaving that there. There we go. This is the shorter end of the extension cable. I'm going to cut these again. This time I'm going to attach the waterproof butt splicers to these. Twist them nice and tight. Here's the waterproof butt splicers. And we're going to be using our heat shrink tubing as well. I got one piece of tubing and cut it in half. I don't need the whole thing. Key, make sure you put it on the wiring before you crimp down the butt splicer or else you're screwed. The wiring here was thinner than the, than the other, so I had to, I bent the wire, the copper wire in half 
over each other, end over end, so that there was more surface area when I crimped it down, so it was tighter. And it fit in pretty well. So we're crimping both ends of the wires here. So the, the, the second, the shorter end of that extension cable is going on to the, the uh, part of the unit, the cables that go on to the part of the unit, the fish finder. Make sure you put that all the way in there and squeeze the heck out of that thing so it doesn't come out. Squeeze! On go the heat, heat shrink tubing. Make sure that thing is centered. Fire. We're going to heat that thing up. Make sure you're, you're going back and forth. You're not holding it in one spot. You don't want to melt your wires. But you'll see it come along nicely here. We're just securing that even further. We're water, waterproofing it further. Nice. Look at that. Took me two matches per tubing just to make sure I got it all. Look at that. Looks nice. Time to do the other one. Left, right, left. There we go. Heat that thing up. Look at that. Beautiful. Alright, we're gonna wrap from the exposed red and black wires all the way to the end so we don't want any wires showing as you can see here from the connect that electric tape goes all the way till the black tubing starts so as you can see to plug in the battery and to the finder all you need is that one female and male connect that extension cable so I got it in my crate running through the hole in my crate just right along under my seat of my lifetime Yukon kayak. I highly recommend this kayak. And right along the edge there of the kayak to the fish finder. There's no mess. It's just one cable running through. For anyone wondering, this is the Tr Scotty transducer mounting arm with the gear that you can tighten and loosen. When you loosen it up, you can drop down that arm into the water and your, that transducer will also adjust as well so you can move it into the water. And we got the universal fish finder mount as well by Scotty that my um, fish finder is sitting on top of which has been really nice. Well thanks for watching guys. I appreciate it. I hope this helps some of y'all um, with your kayak builds and remember to like and subscribe and happy fishing.